verse 4. Then the Chaldeans spoke to the king of, uh, then the Chaldeans spoke to the king in Aramaic, Aramaic, which was the tongue of the Chaldeans, which is interesting because it's the first tongue to have come out of the original tongue, Hebrew, when the 70 languages came out of the original one back in Babel because of the rebellion of Nimrod and his people, which was the origin of Babel, which became Babylon, which we are now reading hundreds of years later, of course, want to make that clear. So the origin of Babylon is actually Babel. In Hebrew is Babel. So Babel was formed by Nimrod, who rebelled against the Most High back in Genesis. And he represents the beast, the first beast of Revelation 13, the little horn of the book of Daniel, as we will read on other studies. So, also, well, the point, because of the Aramaic language, is that many people claim that when Mashiach came, he was speaking Aramaic, and that that was the language that they were speaking, and that is not true. There are many reasons why, even with the scriptures and other historic writings, that we can know that Mashiach came speaking in Hebrew, and those around him spoke in Hebrew, even though there were a lot of people that were speaking Aramaic already. Because ever since the exile in Babylon, as scripture also tells us, half of the population of Israel came back speaking Aramaic. But the other half continued speaking Hebrew. And that uh, maintained all the way till the Greek Empire, when they basically prohibited from pronouncing the name and added the vowel points to the letters in order not to lose the Hebrew pronunciation because it was getting uh, um, less and less known pretty much. So 150 years later, Mashiach comes. He comes speaking Hebrew over his um, cross. It is written in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin, showing that those were the three main languages. The Hebrew for the Yahudim who were sacrificing Yahushua, the Greek of the empire that was just losing his power, like right when Rome entered and took power. So the Greek empire was um, getting forgotten pretty much, but that was the language that was being used. Now the Roman empire was starting, so they were introducing the Latin language. So that's why above the head of Mashiach was written in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. So it shows that it was Hebrew. Then we see that when Yahushua appeared to Paul, Shaul, he spoke to him in Hebrew. So there are several things that we see in scriptures. And unfortunately, some people, some translators, where it says Hebrew in the original, they have written Aramaic as if it was the same because of the very um, close proximity between those languages because they are very um, alike in several things. The, Mainly the fact that they use the same alphabet. So, there are many opinions regarding when Aramaic became a language and what it represents and a bunch of other things. Uh, it is said that it is spoken by the demons, that the demons speak in Aramaic. And just that is suspicious. But the point is that Aramaic was the first language that came out of the Hebrew. And then 69 more languages were formed during the Tower of Babel. So now we are reading that they were in Babel, which is pretty much what had been um, prophesied, in a way, by the Babel of Nimrod. So what I'm trying to say is that the many shadows that Scripture tells us or shows us in, script, in, in the Old Testament, for instance, Babel, Nimrod, represented the Babylon that is now in the power of Nebuchadnezzar. And they both represent the great whore of Babylon that would conquer the world through the falsehood that he would teach, as in Confucian, which is the meaning of Babel or Babylon. So, that's why it's, it's important to see also how the, the Aramaic language is found, like, throughout the scriptures, is found the most in the book of Daniel. Like Daniel has pretty much 
a chapter in Aramaic and other parts that are in Aramaic. So the rest is Hebrew. Maybe one or two words, two words in one or other like couple books, one or two words that are or are are said to be Aramaic, but the whole scripture is Hebrew. In Daniel we find some Aramaic because of where it was written and because it is said that Nebuchadnezzar actually wrote part of it little part when he converted so that would be for later the king answered and said to the Chaldeans my decision I'm sorry I went ahead verse 4 the Chaldeans spoke to the king in Aramaic O king live forever like I said it's interesting that some say that demons speak Aramaic and we are seeing here that Nebuchadnezzar as the king of confusion Babel called his magicians his sorcerers the astrologers and the Chaldeans, they were all practicing things that the Torah tells us not to. Even though, like, I want to make, I want to make something clear. I, uh, the scripture shows us how Yahweh placed the stars in the firmament for a reason, as signs and many other things. But one thing is to come to know or study what they are created for, and another is to try and um, see the future through those things and trying to uh, basically find your destiny through the stars instead of doing it through the will of the Father. As I always explain, those who are with Yahweh are above the destiny found in the stars. That's why we have nothing to do with them regarding what the stars tell us because the, star, the stars do say or uh, show what is going to happen. However, in the reality that is temporal, the earthly reality. When Yahweh told Abraham to count the stars, um, among other things, Abraham saw that he wasn't going to have children according to what it was written on the stars. But Yahweh gave him a higher destiny, if I may call it that, through his promise of giving him the son Yitzhak. That's why his name was changed, so that his future would be changed. So that's why Yahweh tells us in Jeremiah 10 that we shouldn't worry about what the stars tell us. Because it has nothing to do with us, it has to do with the nation. So even though the nations may fear it because they see what is coming for them who are idolaters pretty much, we shouldn't because our destiny is that of the one that Yahweh promised Abraham, which is above the stars. So I want to make that clear, but we can study what the stars represent mean and things like that why yahweh created them so that we may know the signs but we shouldn't follow the astrologers who end up trying to see the future or um yeah try and make money fooling people telling them their supposed destiny because many people don't even read the stars they just make it up whatever they tell their clients um, magicians, astrologers, sorcerers, and Chaldeans, they can Aramaic as if they were serving demons. That's why they would speak that language. They would practice those things. Um, the original language, as is said in comment here, from Daniel 2, verse 4, through Daniel 7, 28, is Aramaic. So, from verse 4 which is when they came to speak to him soon yeah from the verse 4 where it says then the Chaldeans spoke to the king in Aramaic from then on starts being Aramaic until chapter 7 